warmly welcome you back to um, Human Humane Architecture with us here on Think Tech Hawaii, the 325th time already. And uh, we're going to do it differently this time than we have never done it before. And if we can get the first slide up, um, we're going to have, the as the School of Architecture, um, we have a guest in, another fellow German, Thomas Auer, who's going to um, teach uh, and talk uh, with us how to design buildings as we uh, had them um, in mid-century um, uh, and we want them back again, which are easy breezy buildings and he knows how to do that. So we have him. And so um, here he is when we Zoom with him um, to connect to him. And also I picked him up from the airport and we had um, our Mai Tais beers at Arnold's, the Tiki Bar. And um, we hope you, when you watch the show, you will have been with us in the auditorium and listened to, um, to Thomas in, in his talk. And so the way we talk uh, amongst each other is uh, we, as uh, us on the show today, uh, Richard Lowe again and Bandit uh, Kanikakon in, in the background, that we, um, th that we caught us last time that we were basically operating with each other um, as we were trained um, uh, as for the sort of the, the prime time in life, the productive prime time in, in life, which is the core where we, uh, where we work and we generate income and we pay taxes and all of that. So everything seems to be conditional to that. Until then, we train ourselves to get there. And once we're not anymore, once we're retired or, or stopped doing this, we are in a different mode, but we still treat us that way. So that's how you bonded and I felt with you, Rich, that we were kind of having you on a leash. And according to the titles of the previous show, which is themed after what you bonded always meaning well say is let's go, Mr. Low. But that means let's go somewhere where I want you to go based upon these previous paradigms. And we thought this might actually be not helpful um, due to what you all have to say to us, Rich, where you are now, where you don't have to be felt obligated to all these things. So this is why we call the show now, now, uh, Mr. Lowe, let go. So we let you go, Rich, wherever you want to go today. And to uh, get you going, get the next slide up, and uh, what's your thought about this guy, Rich? Oh, he's pretty ugly, if you ask me. Uh, I think I must have been a fan. Someone must have turned on a fan on my right or left because I'm I'm looking like a ghost with the uh, hair sort of blowing all over the place. But, you know... You can't always look beautiful in life. Well, and, and isn't beauty highly subjective and relative, Rich? Yeah, it is, actually. It, 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 I'm glad you said that, because it clears me of, of some of the fright that I might experience. Being Do you a, remember... Do you remember who captured you that way, who took that picture? No, I don't. I have no idea. So this is one of the many mentees that, you know, really appreciate you being around and sharing you uh, what you were thinking and what you're saying at this part of your life. And that's Walker Mason, who has been, you know, with you and Bandit recently quite a bit. And he took this picture of you. and. Um, I'm pretty sure because he's a very nice young gentleman. Uh, what, how you uh, perceive this? I'm very sure it was not his intention because he's a nice guy, so he would never put you on the spot and say, you know, I will depict, you know, Rich as an ugly man. He, uh, you know, when talking to him, he basically said, "I wanna, I wanna capture Rich in the moment that I found compelling." Um, That's um, as not being sort of dressed up, right, and no makeup on and not the hair being made. It's just be be who you were at this moment, right? 
let's try that. <laughs> and 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 wanting to be real and honest, uh, I put you on the spot, bonded in the background, because you always said, "Oh, the Frankenstein picture." <laughs> what I would like to do is to to discuss one element of Queen Emma Gardens that's particularly defining, and and that is, let's see, can I put a I'd like to put something on the screen. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, can you try the next picture? And you, Rich, let us know if that's the picture. If not, it's not the one, we go to other pictures. Is that the one you have in mind? That's exactly the picture. All right. It, yeah. It, 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 it's a sort of uh, three buildings of a royalty kind of nature. The The building... On the left, which is maybe 20 floors high or something like that, that's called the Prince Building. And then to the right of that are two higher rise buildings, which are the King and the Queen of Queen Emma Gardens. But what I think is so fascinating about it is the site plan that supports these three buildings. And you can see there's kind of a heart-shaped uh, thing on the, on the, it would be the west side of the king and the queen buildings. And I think that those are, are particularly uh, meaningful as a a picture of a, of a very pedestrian area for the people who live in in these towers and then on the left on the right rather of the uh, prince building is a circular thing and that is a swimming pool and that's quite exciting to me, uh, but it because it 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 gives people a chance to wander around on all the uh, all the pathways that have been developed along with the buildings, and uh, it, it shows how how interesting. A, a good site planning effort can be. Uh, the, I, I have walked on all of those pathways and hundreds of other people have done the same thing. And they're, they are the people who live here and want to get out and kind of lubricate their joints by yeah. uh, you know sort of wandering all around the the Queen Emma Gardens yeah and yeah it's it's a very uh it's a very orderly site plan and the the king and the queen buildings which are on the r right and left of the right of the two buildings on the right, and the Prince Building on the left are uh, are particularly restrained, and yet they have a lot to offer in the way of being being in those buildings. They can look down on the site plan and say to themselves, "Oh, I want to go there, or I want to have my wedding." in that little cottage uh, on this side of the king and queen building. And the, the site plan really uh, defines a number of purposes that can be fulfilled by this, this complex of buildings and walkways and gardens and, and 
uh, waterways and so forth. And that's something that I felt worth mentioning because we don't always get that in our in our city. So uh, so I'll I'll pull that slide away for the moment. Yeah, and go to the next one, maybe. Michael. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Now, this one is, uh, if we want to get into the vocabulary of Kevin Lynch, who was my my sort of advisor at MIT, uh, and who defined various parts of the city as worth defining. And these, of course, these two towers, which he, he can we can see in at the right side of the slide, are a marvelous uh, depiction of where Queen Emma Gardens is. And uh, you're, you're coming down here from the Poly Highway, and undoubtedly too high a speed, but you you can see these two buildings standing there between the ocean and yourselves driving down the, the highway. I think that those are, are very uh, uh, telling ideas that that uh, I learned about and were somewhat defined at MIT, which is always looking for meaning in 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 everything. It's interesting as you introduced them to us as they were naming them as the the royal couple, the king and the queen, and they had a baby, the prince, the little kid tower, right? And here you also see the little kit tower to the left, but you sort of don't see it, right? Because the parents, so to speak, are in your face and in line with the Poly Highway, right? And the, the little guy, the little building guy, the prince, you know, is there, but he's like on the side of the parent. That's what <laughs> you made me think about what you previously said and what we see here. I think that's a, a great sort of description of what's before us and 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 of the of the of the making of babies in general uh, yeah which which you were sharing with us that your personal baby you know grew up here your first one grew up in the building actually that's true absolutely true yeah my wife and I moved into Queen, Queen Emma Gardens, which at the time you paid rent to move in to. And because uh, they were all rented out to various people like me and my then, my late wife and children and people walking around on the, on all the walkways of Queen Emma Gardens. It, it really is very nice to have in the landscape something like this to, well, perhaps memorize ab about the nature of the city. Mm -hmm. So you want, the, speaking of which, you know, having lived in there, you want to walk us back in and maybe go to the next slide? I do. Um, the next slide is, is a corner of one of the kitchens of the apartments in Queen Emma Gardens. And it, it's, it's kept to a very simple system of wood doors and, and and wood sort of movable walls and 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 that sort of thing and that kind of a that
that that kind of an aesthetic has been utilized throughout the building, whatever the room may be that we're looking at. And this the second slide is uh, is a little larger scope than the 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 previous slide, and it shows you how. You can you can make the kitchen an attractive event, even though it's just a kitchen in which people cook and serve. Yeah, and, and what you're what pointing out, um, I, I you inspire me to go back and sort of in in more shows to kind of reflect on that, but. What you said is is that the kind of the 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 kind of the moving walls and the show you screen that you can see here, they allow you to actually um, um, transform in in a multitudinal ways. For example, in the previous slide and the one before, there is a sort of paravent thing that you once you have all the dirty dishes in the Michael. If you can go back to the previous one, if you were lazy and you have all the dirty dishes not washed yet, right, and everything is piling up, but you are you don't want to do it yet, right, And but you don't want to look at the dirty dishes, you pull that thing closed. Um, and then you are in your nice sort of bar area that has, when you go to the, the other next picture, Michael, that you can sit at your sort of elevated, you know, table there. A high table and and have a drink or a coffee or an, a a déjustif as the French call it the the drink after the meal, and and then with a shoji screen you can also then say well I don't even want to see that I want to be in the living room and no not see a kitchen at all, so you can actually as you bundled call it an open system you could do various things and basically make your still rather sort of you know not opulent space as you said last time rich but very sort of efficient and effective space but you can multi-purpose that and multi-function it and that's certainly uh, it seems to me that what kevin lynch kind of talked argue on a large scale as sort of a you know a city as a large building also then uh, holds true within the building itself that you can turn it into sort of little different small kind of scenarios slash cities. Well, that's true. And the, perhaps the next slide could be shown. And, and that is, uh, it, it looks like a master building of a great big apartment, but it's not. It's a part of the living room. Uh, and it it has the usual glass doors that allow you to look out at the at gardens and cars and parking lots and walkways uh, that that you would want to know are there. So that yeah, that and this is interesting because you know at at that time. Talking prime time of life, you were in your thirties when you came here. I was not; I, I was barely born. So for me, this is something that you know. This is the America that I had dreamed of from pictures like this, but it took me many more decades to actually get there. But this is when you were in your prime time, and what people call the prime time in life. You know, when you're sort of half through adultery and you're the most productive. You're also the most valuable for society because you can work the longest hours, right? So this is all kind of that kind of time. Um, and so it, it is the America that I, you know, as a little kid only dreamed about and thought this must be the holy land because it's for me kind of a total piece of artwork in how you, you know, create livable spaces. And it's, it's all very sophisticated. It's all very elegant. And, you know, the, the thing is, back to the very the slide of you, Rich, I allow myself to say I see the similarity that both have aged in grace. They're not 
you know, anymore as they used to be because that was then and now is now. But you are, are both around and you, you know, aged well and um, and you're both real. And actually the wind, you know, that blows through your hair also blows through the building because it's a building that, as you taught us, told us, was not with air conditioning. That was an option, but it was primarily without. So I see actually, you know, the two of you, the king and the queen and their prince as buildings, and you as sort of, you know, a zeitgeist companion. I think that's a marvelous description of what we were at that time. Yeah, we and what you still are. That's maybe as important, or maybe I wouldn't say more important, but you know. There's things that were great, but they're not anymore. But the things who last, you know, these are the ones who we know they work well. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm going to, I've decided to, to consider that a compliment. That's how it was meant. So I was successful too. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you think, um, can we bring that back, that kind of, you know, where maybe America was at its best? What do you think? I mean, mm -hmm. we know someone who says, make America great again. I don't know if you want to go do there to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't beat that idea of making America great again. And if it could be done in terms of the architecture of our cities, all the better. And I think mm -hmm. that this one, Queen Emma Gardens is a is a picture of just that. It's a picture yeah. of doing things well and effectively. Yeah, good point. And you know, when you say like make it great again, means it um used to be great and then it wasn't great anymore um which is certainly true to you know many things as you know objects that manifestate culture like cars for example you know there were like the crappy 80s and 90s where things were falling apart and not meant to last anymore but but you and this building here is actually an example for that America has stayed to be great. So we actually don't need to make it great again because it was never not great. You know what I mean? I'm not certain that I know what you mean just yet, but I well, think when, I'm getting when, You know, when they say, and when Trump says, make it great again, that means, oh, it has gone bad recently. So we need to make it great again. But I'm saying you and Queen Emma Gardens have never turned bad. So we just continue to have you around, you as Richard Lowe and Queen Emma Gardens as the building. And maybe we, we go back, you know, because the interiors these days aren't like that anymore. We showed some in the last where the furniture is kind of bulky and kind of clumsy, kind of obnoxious. Maybe we need to sort of re discover, you know, how you furnish something like that, you know, more delicately. Well, I think we do. I, th I think the, the, the doing of the, of the interiors of, of a building like these three buildings are is, is very valuable as, a, as an asset in, in making it very special. Yeah. So um, we have three minutes left. So we want to talk what's next because um, you inspired Soto Brown to be um, back um, because you you poked him with Kevin Lynch and your Civic Center. So he got him going. So he will basically next week is spring break. So it gives us a little break, as I understand. We can go to the beach and party wild as kids do right over spring break, Rich. 
<laughs> I, uh, that's certainly an option. <laughs> and and that time the soda will work for us, as I understand, and will sort of be inspired by you know your your thoughts about you know the Civic Center and Kevin Lynch and and do, do a kind of a pitch presentation. And then he will actually bring you both back as the star of the discourse and and chit chat about it. So that's basically what's what's next in in the game. And until then, um, you know, tomorrow we will see you at Thomas Hours lecture. I look and, forward. And Thomas, and Tom, Thomas will giving us clues about how to sort of keep that tradition of easy breezy buildings in these days and ages, which are anymore what they used to be because everything has changed, but keep up these kind of values and, and you know, you do the same. We have to go to our, to keep us, you know, in shape, we have to see our dermatologist who we share. I mean, we don't share, we go both to the same Janice dermatologist and she has to check on our Holly skin, right? And and that's what you have to do. That's what the queen and the the king and the prince have to do, right? You constantly have to see and do little touch-ups and little patching here and there, right? But other than that, you just stay who you are. You meaning the buildings and you, Rich. <laughs> well, thank you very much. for. I've always wanted to be, have a building named after me, but to have it the king and the queen and the prince, that's a superlative <laughs> evaluation. <laughs> well, thanks so much for letting your your brain storm, so to speak, and roam around uh, more freely. And let's continue that. So let's see you all back uh, in about a week uh, with the Soto Brown picking up on your Kevin Lynch poking, so to speak. And then um, the week after, uh, you guys are going to be together while I'm going to be uh, sneaking back half around the world to Germany for a little while, going back with Thomas. So we got some business to do there. Okay, so until then, um, stay all um, healthy and happy, of course, and stay aging a, a top and a long agility as you read. If you liked this show, why don't you give us a like or subscribe to our channel? Thanks so much.